Well, this is live. Guys, you're live on youtube.com slash what's trending. And I'm Shira Lazar. You're watching What's Trending from Playlist Live, brought to you by Marriott Hotels and my first guest today. Give it up for Tessa Violet. Come on out, Tessa. <laughs> hey. Hey, girl, hey. You'll love the echo. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Say good morning back. Good oh my God, they're so up and awake <laughs> compared to all of us. Um, it's nice to see you. Yeah, it's nice and to you see you too. You always wear fabulous jackets, by oh the way. Oh my gosh. What's the story behind you and these jackets? Well, okay, any convention, it's like maybe the conventions I go to account for seven days of the entire year, and they are the only seven days I look nice. Every other day I am in sweatpants with holes with my hair up and like a t-shirt I've been wearing for eight days. Yeah. <laughs> um, my producer asked me the other day, do you think if you ever like really make it, you're going to step up your fashion game? <laughs> oh, no. I, was like, I think that'd be awesome just to wear that all the time, like <sighs> rocking out on stage in sweats. Being comfortable is just so great. It's underrated. It is. It is. What would you call that style? Comfy uh, chic? <laughs> maybe homeless chic. <laughs> oh, you're upgraded homeless. You've been uh, touring a lot yeah. and doing a lot of it's like content around the tours, it seems. Can you talk about you know that and why that's important for you to be capturing that? Sure. Um, I just did a living room tour with Rusty Clanton, which we put on Tumblr. We said, hey, um, let us know if you want to play, have us play a show in your living room and you're okay with having strangers. And um, we had like 50 people across the U.S. reach out and we picked 30 of them and drove to each of them, brought in a set. <laughs> we had a backdrop and a merch booth and... Um, played, it's like an hour show that we play and then we hang out for two hours and it's, it's cool. It's really vulnerable and it's an experience that's different from one with a big stage and lots of lights and microphones and it's special. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, well, it, explain that first day when you're like in someone's house that you don't know. Was that, did it ever, it was it ever really awkward and did you ever get used to it? Um... <laughs> Most people, I mean, you would think it would be very awkward, but most people are exceptionally kind and exceptionally excited to have you there. And I've only had a few houses where it felt a little bit awkward, but usually it's just nerves that make it feel that way. And I kind of, I kind of feel like it's as awkward as you make it. And where they would they just rock out? People would be like, it would be a packed living room. <laughs> Well, we don't use any mics or amps, so it's more like an acoustic set. Yeah, it's it's, it's pretty chill. chill. <laughs> You're not like running around the living room doing some like crazy stuff. Yeah. You also started a podcast recently. Yes. Um, Rusty and I, uh, it was just the two of us on the tour. So we did a tour cast where every day we had a show. We did a 45-minute podcast mm -hmm. uh, in the car. So if you listen to it, it's like, <sighs> hey, what's up, Dissa? What's up, Rusty? Um, yeah, that was fun. <laughs> so you did it while you're driving. Yeah. Well, there's a, so, uh, how many hours did you, did you drive? It's always one of those things. Like, how do you fill those hours? So you were very productive. Well, we drove seven thousand miles. So I'm not sure how many hours that was, but yeah, the podcast was a nice uh, way to kind of break up the trips. Yeah. I like to do it the first thing we get in the car. Rusty liked to do it at the end of the day. Really? So the end of the we day, usually did it in the middle. You're tired. Like, I feel like the beginning of a road, like a road trip or a chunk of time that you're driving, you're excited. By the end, you're just like, when are, are we there yet? Yeah. <laughs> right? And you just feel gross. You want to get out of the car. You're antsy. Yeah. What do you do now that you're not on tour? Does the podcasting continue? Um, or you just go on like we haven't picked up the driving. podcast again, <laughs> but I've been in the studio with my producer, and we did two new demos for uh, the show last night. Um, one is was like a kind of a bluesy pop song called "Love Like Me," and the other was a pop pop song called "I Just Want to Be Parentheses Taken Seriously." Oh, <laughs> touche. Yeah. Do you have like an emoji at the end of that? <laughs> uh, you know, I feel like there should be. I almost bailed on it at the last second because it's a weird title. It's uncomfortable. I feel embarrassed saying it. But when I wrote it, I just thought, this is true. Everyone feels this way. I just, I 
vastly want it. I want to make good content, and I want to be respected for it. But um, I played it for my friend, and they're like, mm, are you sure? <laughs> and right before we played it, I was in the middle of the set, and I thought, I'm bailing. And I turned around to Tyler, my drummer, and I was like, hey, let's not. <laughs> <laughs> OK, we're going to do it. <laughs> What's up? How much does, like, I guess the, your bandmates, how, how much do they help you in the process of creating your music? And then it seems like they're an essential part of the whole experience. Um, well, I write my music yeah. alone in my room on my yeah, piano or my guitar. And, um, of a hmm. Tessa Violet song. A Tessa Violet song. Well, I guess usually I'm driving and I have a thought, like, for the I Just Want to Be Taken Seriously song. Someone asked me, if I had imposter syndrome, which is if you have a slow climb in your success, when you are successful, you have this fear that at any moment people are going to realize that you're not talented or you don't deserve any recognition you've gotten. And I thought, oh, that's a funny idea. I don't relate to that because I just don't see myself as successful yet. And that is sort of its own kind of neuroses, I guess, yeah. and thinking about that, and I thought it was funny, so I wrote it um, by myself, and then I brought it to my producer, and he figured out the, um, what instru you know, we figure out together what instruments come in where, what do the drums sound like, what's the vibe of the song, is it a guitar song, is it a synth song, and then we send the demo to the band, and they learn the parts, and then we rehearse Saturday, and Play it Saturday night. Oh, was this in Nashville? Does this all happen in Nashville? Uh, the band I played with for Playlist is from Orange County, but my producer is in Nashville. Nice. How much is that influencing your music now? And like, what other uh, singers do you look up to? Ooh, right now I'm super into L. King and Halsey. Check oh. them out. I know. Do you love gasoline? That's my favorite. Do, do you ever feel like when you hear a song or any piece of art that's so good, you're like mad because you're like, why didn't I write that? Yes. Yeah. I know. And how are there still things that people haven't thought of with all the music and songs out there, yet originality is still there. there you know, it's still possible, which is an amazing oh, yeah. thing. It's incredible. Um, Halsey's record is Badlands. Um, L. King's record, oh shoot, what is her record? You think I'd know since I've been listening to it. It's all on Spotify. <laughs> Just check it out. You're also a big Taylor Swift fan. I love Taylor Swift, my queen. <laughs> <laughs> What's it about her music that you love and you're inspired by? Um, initially, I got into her like three years ago and I didn't necessarily latch onto her music right away but I really liked the things that she was saying online. And um, I watched her documentary that was like on the Disney Channel for the Fearless tour. And she just seemed really likable. And I liked what she said about life and people and kindness. And then kind of started listening to her music after that. And I was like, wow, these are good songs. She's a She's good a writer. Powerhouse, right? Yeah. Uh, you also give some romantic advice. Is this true? Yes, I do. What, what the it, romance. Why are you into giving romantic advice? Is it be, are you giving advice based on what you've been through? Um, How can Tessa help the average person in the romance <laughs> side of things? Uh, <laughs> well, I guess I like relational advice, um, whether or not it's a romantic relationship, but a lot of um, the questions I get are romance-oriented. People love talking about relationships. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, the basis of life fulfillment is in interpersonal interaction. So I think we're all trying to figure out how can I do this the best. I love it. You're Tessa Violet, the relationship expert. <laughs> we, uh, we actually are taking questions on Twitter. And any of you watching live online, hashtag married at playlist. I'm going to check out um, some of these questions. And if you're here in person, we do have a mic if you haven't tweeted. Hey. Do any of you want to ask a question? We have one person here while I check right now. What's your name? Where are you from? Hi, my name is Ryan, and I'm from Maryland. Hi, Ryan. Nice um, to meet you. you. Did I meet you last night? No. I met someone else from Maryland. <laughs> okay. Um, where do you see yourself in 10 years? 
Okay, well, this is terrifying, but in 10 years, I will be 35. And it happens. Yeah. <laughs> it, I, it Isn't does. it weird? It feels it's very strange. And then you, it's like it never seemed like it was a concept until now it's closer to being. Yeah. Now that. I have friends who are 35 and uh, they're married and one of them has a five year old. And I'm like, I would have a baby in five years if that were me. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, I still am a baby, you know? And I guess, oh, where do I see myself in 10 years? I'd really love to somehow help in the uh, relief in the sex trade. I think that's a tragedy. <laughs> and uh, uh, one of the most despicable things on humanity. And I'd love to somehow be involved in that. Probably not on the ground floor, but... Some nonprofit work, social good. I'd love to raise money for it. And um, I'd love if there's some way that my next record could be involved in that. And um, 10 years is so far away. I'm not sure. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? How old are you? <laughs> 16. Okay. So, yeah. What, uh, what would you like to do when you're 26? Yeah. It's a hard one. Thanks for the question. Do you think you'll get back to directing more music videos or, like, other types of sh content on YouTube? Or are you focusing more on music? Um, I'd really like to get back into making vlogs regularly. I was horrified. I looked at my YouTube channel and it's been three months and I was like, where did three months go? Um, I had such a busy summer and I love, I love that um, vlogging is an opportunity to speak into people's lives. But I probably I would not get back into directing. It's um, an all-encompassing love and my uh, creative love right now is in music. But um, my friend Shauna Housen of yeah. Nanaloo uh, is putting out her first short film, Mara and Shen, sometime this year or next year. And uh, Seth, my producer, and I just did a song for that movie, and that was way fun. See, that's interesting, doing like soundtracks and everything. Do you see yeah. doing more of that as other YouTube creators are getting into long-form content? And I would love stuff. to. It was so much fun. It's like a rock song, which is not usually what I do. Yeah. But, and we're trying to write around these action hits. It's an action sequence. So that was really fun. Awesome. We have a segment called Explain Your Tweets. Oh. So are you ready, guys? Ready. All right. And these are real. Is Muppet Babies canon? Okay, so you know, do you do you guys what does old enough mean? to remember Muppet Babies? They sound yeah. really cute. Heck yeah. So it was a cartoon about the Muppets as babies, but there's we see over and over again the Muppets like meet each other in Muppet Manhattan. So it's like, did you forget that you went to kindergarten <laughs> together? So I guess it's not canon. But someone replied to that tweet and said that the entire Muppet Babies universe is based on one dream sequence in one of the movies so the whole thing is very go. trippy if you ask me the whole idea of muppets yeah. but it's a beautiful thing uh it's been too long since i've seen a pug irl yeah. i love pugs so much they give me life they're very cute and um one of my friends in nashville has one and one of my neighbors i've never spoken to them but i know where they live and i've seen them walk their pug and i'm like every time i drive past i'm like are they in the yard and they're not and why don't you get a pug then i'm thinking about it but i want to i want to rescue one um because they have such short snouts they have trouble breathing and it makes me so sad <laughs> so it's hard to justify bring getting a puppy i just i want to rescue one and i want to find the right one i don't know uh, do you you, you got to follow them on Instagram. Oh, my the friend. Best Instagram account. Bubble Becca Pugs <laughs> is the pug Instagram account. She has 20. And it's sad how you could just stay there forever. Bubble Becca Pugs. What was my life before the sunglasses emoji? What? Do you want to? Did you want to hear that again? Do you want to hear that again? Bubble check it out. Becca, B-E-C-C-A, Pugs. It's amazing. <laughs> They're writing it down. What was my life before the sunglasses emoji? Why do you love this emoji so much? Um, I guess it's like, it's kind of like the sarcastic, like smirky face, but it's uh, less of a statement. It's just like, yeah. Too cool. Yeah. For school. Yeah. I like, I like that phrase. <laughs> I wish I could unknow tripophobia is a thing. No, this is that fear of tiny irregular holes in things. 
So how did this come about? Have you seen that? No. Like, it, uh, look it up. There's um, pictures of it online. It's the fear of tiny holes in your skin or oh, in tiny your skin. holes in anything. Yeah. It's terrifying. And I used to have, be afraid of that as a kid, and then I forgot about it until I was talking about caborophobia, the fear of crabs. And it was actually Hannah Hart who said, have you ever looked up this? And I was like, no. <laughs> and so so you, it is a fear still of yours. It's terrifying. Wow. It makes me feel nauseated looking at it. Like, what do you mean? Like, uh, like but we don't have, we do have holes in our skin, obviously, but the ones that are visible? Look it up, and it's not, it's not a rational fear. It's just when you see the image of it, it you either have a physical response to it or you don't. So it, what else do you have a fear of? Uh, crabs. Uh-huh. Uh, the claw kind that you see on the beach. Um, this is just also, it's something nauseating. They're creepy. They look like giant spiders. <laughs> how do you get over your fears? Or do you have any personal fears that like, how do you tell yourself every, you know, to get over something? What do you, do you have your like inner cheerleader? Hmm. Words of advice from Tessa Violet. Wisdom. That's a good question. Generally, I am afraid that I may put too much of my worth in my success. <laughs> and um, I'm not sure if that's something that you can just get over. I think I, it's about stepping back and making sure that I know that my worth is based in just being me and being a person with a soul and that sort of thing. I think that's beautiful. No, it's true. I mean, in stepping back and enjoying life in real time, yeah. right? France has more poodles than you'd first imagine. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, totally. you know, poodles are stereotypically a French dog, but um, Rusty and I got to go to France with um, Ali G back there uh, with G. Maker. They brought us to sing at a Maker party, and um, everyone had a poodle. It was funny. It's like, another poodle, really? It, but pugs are your favorite dog. Pugs are my favorite dog. So what's coming up next for you? Are you going to be touring more? Or are we going to be hearing more of this new music? Um, well, I'd like to go into the studio and start recording the next record in October mm -hmm. or November. And once it's recorded, I want to pitch it to labels and management and try and hop on a tour with a band. But to do that, you need... Um, someone backing you with money to pay for the band and to pay for the hotel because when you tour with a band suddenly everything's five times as expensive oh totally how would you describe that sound that you want to we're gonna see from you coming up oh good question well i mean melodically i write somewhere between pop and folk but um production wise it's a uh, uh, it's a little bit like if Fun, Nate Roos, and um, Paramore, <laughs> and Maroon 5 had a child. Wow. Yeah. Fascinating. <laughs> we have actually a question uh, you tweeted with the hashtag Marriott Playlist from Hey Zeus. Hey Mika Kitty, I would love to know your opinion on Nicole Arbor's shaming fat people video. Did you see this? Um, yeah. Do you want to comment? <laughs> well, you know, a lot of people, I didn't realize how big, like, I feel like I miss out on all this stuff. And then I hear about it happening. Everyone's I, talking about it. I guess it was, it was a lot of very hurtful things to say. And generally, I think, why not choose kindness in every circumstance? Um, when given the opportunity to feel something hurtful welling up in you, which I definitely do, and I think, oh, that is a smart observation, and it's going to get a laugh from my friends. I have a moment where I think, is this uplifting? What if someone said this about my friend? Would it hurt me? And, you know, the answer is, of course, yes. Hurtful things are hurtful, and kindness is honest, and it's beautiful. And I think you should always choose kindness. And that said, I think also with the reaction, and many of my friends who've responded to that have just been very 
vulnerable with how it made them feel, and you can't argue with feelings when people say, that hurt me. You can't argue with that. It's hurtful. But um, from my friends, I've really not seen a lashback, and uh, it'd be easy to say a lot of really mean things about her, and I'm really proud that my friends haven't. They've just yeah. talked about how they feel. And I think from us, it's important to think, um, does saying something hurtful hurt or is it helpful? Is it kind? That's great advice. That's awesome. Thank you for that. Do you want to give a tease of any of your new music here with the echo? A little tune <laughs> to close this up? You don't need to. Oh my, oh, she's like, uh, oh, this is the morning. I didn't bring any of my instruments though. Oh. Do you have like a, one, one of your favorite, like? I'll give a lyric instead. Okay, a lyric. I like that. Um, <laughs> mm, I just feel like if you don't dance, have the monkey, key, dance. you don't have it. Um, I, appreci I appreciate the chanting, though. That makes me feel very yeah, encouraged. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. But I am just going to say the lyric. <laughs> All right, what's the and lyric? It was a song that I performed last night in I Just Want to Be, parentheses taken seriously. The second verse went, um, hmm. Oh, um, if I'm being honest, I would call myself a liar carve the part out from my chest that fills my mouth with fire. And I thought, thanks. Um, you know, it's just easy to say you say you want to be kind and only do kind things, but then, you know, mean things pop out. And, or to exaggerate a claim, you know, to say, yeah, I've written 11 songs so far, when really it's like four and a half. And it's like, that's not really true. What, what makes me want to, like, tell these tiny mm, lies? Yeah. And um, I think it's a you know, a humanity thing and a pride thing, and I wish I could just cut that part out of me. Ego, right? We're all fighting our own ego. Yeah. Well, you have been delightful. Thank you so much. Give it up you for Tessa delightful. Violet. Looking forward to all that Thanks new music.